water jet. Um, this is the XD uh, slow water jet Mach 500. I read signs. Today we are on location at Flow and we are doing a video that you guys have been asking for for who knows how long. And Dan here, <laughs> a proud Flow employee, he is going to let us destroy two entire Flow water jet machines by pointing them at each other. <laughs> not the truth, not the truth. I feel like we've been deceived. Wait, why are we here? <laughs> we came all the way out here for this, Dan. Just one water jet. Just one water oh, okay. For obvious reasons, we can't just take this one and point it at that one because none of us make that much money. So, flow water jet cutting head with the mixing tube in it. And we have some mixing tubes. So we can cut those. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All fixtured up. How do you feel cutting on a 94,000 PSI water jet? I gotta get to check this off my bucket list, Dan. And this is also the upgraded five axis head. So we've got the step below this one. This one can do cooler stuff. I don't know, but they say it can. Ours is better though. It's more compact and sleek. I don't know what this is, but probably unscrew it and see what happens <laughs> when we run it. <laughs> and in case you were wondering, this is what the pump on a 94,000 PSI water jet looks like. It is what is called an intensifier pump. Ours is a direct drive. So you can tell the difference because this one looks pretty intense. And right there, that's 100 horses. Ours is just 30. It doesn't even look like a single horse. No, that's 100 horses right there. I'm telling you. It doesn't even smell like it. Don't lose any more pieces in the tank. Oh, it's a clean cut. It's amazing what you can do with 94,000 PSI. I think they had a diagram of this in the hall, Dan. Why don't we just look at the diagram? Sorry, <laughs> hindsight. That is what a water jet head looks like, cut in half. I don't think we actually cut the mixing tube at all. I think we barely missed it. No, it went around it. You can feel the bump in there. That's how hard it is. So that mixing tube goes all the way up to here. The abrasive kind of comes in to this chamber here through, through this port. It's upside down. Comes in through this port into that and then the water We'll come down here and kind of push the abrasive down through the mixing tube and out through your nozzle. Not your schnazzle. That keeps us family friendly, Dan. <laughs> Up here is where the on off valve is connected. So that tiny pin, so that's this right here is run by compressed air and it pops that pin down right there and that's what allows the water flow to come in through the side there and then down the actual head. Right? Almost. Oh no! Almost. So it actually okay. takes the pressure off of the pin and then the water passes by. So it doesn't push it in, it actually lets it release off of the Oh, so the off position is when the pin is pushed in. Correct. Gotcha. So this part was cut in half just using garnet, but because it glanced off there and it didn't really do anything to the mixing tube, this is a harder material than the rest of this head. This is all a stainless steel. This is a tungsten carbide. But there's actually a different type of garnet that we can switch to, or a different type of abrasive rather, that we can switch to that is better for cutting through hard materials. What is it? Aluminum oxide. This is regular garnet. This is what we use on all of our cuts. This is aluminum oxide. It looks pretty much the same. So it is, pour it in there, <laughs> put it on top of it. Just mix it in, they'll never know. It looks 
to be exactly the same, but this is meant for cutting harder materials, just quicker or? More aggressive. It's harder than the, uh, than the garnet is, so it's more uh, effective. Okay, so it'll just decrease your cut time, really. Yeah. Garnet would still be able to cut the same stuff, but just not as quickly. Exactly. One more fun fact, these mixing tubes, they are a consumable part. You have to replace them every so often. With regular garnet, they'll last a couple hundred hours. But if you run just straight aluminum oxide through your machine, it'll only last about seven, eight hours, which is a good reason to not use aluminum oxide all the time. Correct you are, Dan. So we just need a fixture, a cutting tube. Uh, Mitch, can you toss that one to me real quick? Yeah. Nice catch. Another fun fact, tungsten carbide is really brittle. We can, we can piece this together. So we got to do a little uh, guesswork here. That is way too fast. We got to slow it down. Let's cut it on a new line. We gotta slow it down way more than we thought. So now we are going how many inches a minute? I think 80 thousandths of an inch a minute. 80 thousandths of an inch a minute. So okay. if we did the full two inch line, it says it would take like 32 minutes. Luckily, we only have to go through a quarter inch. I'm not even sure if it cut or if it just shattered its way through there. It's crazy. And there towards the end, it just got thin enough that it broke it. Then we lost the other half down there, but that is tough stuff. The crazy thing is as soon as we started getting to the thicker portion of this, we actually had to slow the feed rate down to like 10%. Yeah. 10%. We, had, we had to slow it down way more so that the it could kind of catch up to itself but so hopefully we answered that question the best that we could we we used a 94,000 psi water jet we used aluminum oxide we we did pretty much everything possible to try and cut through that uh, next week we're going to be doing another video here at flow we're here for our water jet training and they were kind enough to allow us to film a couple videos here uh, but next week we will be going a lot more into detail about how a water jet works and explain that, so look forward to that video.